Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you, and thanks for clicking into my video. So, um, I'm really happy, alhamdulillah, because it is, it was recently my four year anniversary of accepting Islam. Um, and I'm really happy about it. I shared it on some of my social media, and a few people were interested in hearing about my story and how I came to um, make this really big decision, which thankfully was probably the best decision I've ever made. And um, I don't think my story is the most interesting one, but I do like listening to other people, so I figured, why not share, right? So, firstly, I'm filming this from Brooklyn in April of 2020 during super crazy times. Um, and I just want to say that I hope that you and all of your loved ones are safe and healthy and um, that inshallah we will see the end of this crazy virus as soon as possible and that we are benefited from um, having gone through this and we are humbled um, and we are made to understand that we are not um, invincible as people, we are not um, safe from anything no matter how much money or how much power we have. And I think it's really important to remember that. And this was just an incredible reminder. Um, but I think we're all ready to get back to normal life now. So anyway, back to topic. So um, I grew up in New York. I come from an Italian background. I grew up Roman Catholic, as most Italians do. Um, I went to I went to public school growing up, but I did go to religious education once a week that my parents sent me to. Um, my parents were not very religious, but they accepted the faith and they had me baptized. I went through um, what are called sacraments, um, basically like milestones that you go through growing up as a Catholic. Um, you're baptized, which means like as a baby, you're welcomed to the church. Um, you confess your sins to priests, that's called reconciliation. Um, you symbolically eat the body of Christ um, in church, that's the, the Eucharist, or your first communion, which is done um, around eight years old. And then the last sacrament that I completed was when I was about 13, and it was, it's called confirmation. So um, that's basically when you say that you are accepting your faith and you are um, you're going to remain Catholic of course that that didn't happen um, <laughs> so I always was very interested in world religions I um, I used to watch a lot of TV shows when I was a kid about different cultures and stuff like that so I, I was really kind of always open to different ways of life um, despite not really being educated in, in different things. Um, throughout high school, I think I still continued to identify as Catholic. I just um, didn't go to church or anything like that. I just wasn't um, particularly religious. Um, senior year of high school, I took a class. I did, I did go to Catholic high school, so we did have to take religion classes. Um, but it, the school was pretty secular. It's a very big Catholic institution. I think it's like the largest Catholic high school in New York, in the United States, I think. Um, but it was still pretty secular. There were still a lot of students from different backgrounds, um, students who weren't even Christian who went to the school and they were welcome there. Um, but anyway, we did have to take a religious, uh, religious education class every year until I believe junior year. Um, which is in the US when you're about mm, 16, 17, you can take, you can choose a different class to take. So I took a class about, it was called Many Faces, Many Faces of Faith, and um, we talked about different world religions. Um, I for sure remember learning about Hinduism, Taoism, Buddhism, Confucianism. I don't remember learning about Islam, but I'm sure that we did. I don't know that we can have a many faces of faith class without talking about Islam. Um, so that was my kind of first exposure to other religions. Um, 
college I was an English literature major but I did take a lot of religious education classes uh, no, I'm sorry not religious education because it was a it wasn't a Catholic college of course it, it was um, just theology classes like religious um, religious philosophy classes I went through um, different stages of being interested in different things for example I was really interested in Hinduism at one time um, I really liked the idea of um, recognizing um, holiness within each person and recognizing um, a divine nature of all things and a connection to oneness but I think I decided that Hinduism wasn't really for me because I feel like over time that monotheistic um, basis that the religion has started to shift and started to be forgotten and now it is practiced as more of a polytheistic faith which didn't really um, didn't match up with what I felt was correct. Um, I was also interested in, in a lot of neo-pagan ideas, ideas about finding God and finding holiness in nature and um, being really connected to the earth and things like that. I think at that time I would have said that I was spiritual, I wasn't religious, I was agnostic. I think I always believed in something, but I didn't call that something God. Um, and then, you know, I kind of moved on from that and I started to um, feel a little bit lost. I think in this kind of like new age spirituality kind of thinking, it's difficult because you're not really grounded in anything. You don't really have the the aspects of religion that exist in when it's institutionalized, when you have a societal community, when you have concrete rules to follow and concrete um, guidance. And I think without that guidance, um, you're missing out on religion because religion, as I've heard somewhere, I, I wish I could remember who said this, but religion has a spirituality component, but it also has component of practicality one that explains how to live your life and how to interact with other people and how to um, fulfill a certain role in society and how to um, fulfill your obligations as a human being and how to connect with God um, so I felt a little bit lost I was searching um, studying a lot of different religions um, and in college I actually started to get interested interested in politics so I started asking questions you know about the world um, high school early college time I wasn't really interested in politics at all I didn't really know anything about international affairs I do remember watching the Michael Moore documentary Fahrenheit 9-11 and I watched it with my dad and I remember that there was a scene um, that was filmed in Iraq and there were children on a playground and you know they were running around having fun going up and down slides and swinging on swings and things like that like things that kids do right and my dad said that we bombed those people and I don't remember how old I was at the time but I think that just really impacted me because they were innocent children and, you know, I, I wanted to understand why. I wanted to understand what was going on, what was going on in the Middle East, what was going on all over the world. But particularly, this was the time where um, there was a lot, I mean, there's always a lot of negative press coverage about Islam, but at the time, it was particularly bad. I don't I think it was 2014, 2015. So you can imagine the kind of things that were going on at the time in the world so I just started asking questions and I just started searching and it was um, 
in college we have a break in between the fall semester and the spring semester and it's about a month long so during that time I just started watching everything I can find on YouTube trying to find answers to my questions about what's going on in the world and like where did all these extremist groups come from and is Islam really um, a violent religion is it something that you know I should be um, I should learn more about I should understand what's going on right like I said so just watching everything I could find on YouTube and then I read um, I remember there was this really famous clip of an interview going on around of um, Reza Aslan who's a, a Muslim uh, scholar and he's not a scholar um, of Islam he's a theologist he studies world religions it's his specialty and he wrote a book called um, Zealot the life and times of Jesus of Nazareth and I think a couple of people will remember I, I believe it was like a Fox News interview or something like that where um, the host was very disrespectful and asked him why as a Muslim he decided to write a book about Jesus and he very adamantly explained I did not write this book as a Muslim I wrote this book as a scholar and um, as someone interested in history as someone interested in world faiths and I was impressed I was insulted for him I was annoyed that he was treated that way and I'm not sure if that's the first book of his that I read um, but I believe that it might have been and I highly recommend it it is a book that accounts the um, based on historical sources the life of Jesus peace be upon him Jesus who is a prophet in Islam but who is not considered to be God or the son of God the main difference between Islam and Christianity if you didn't know um, so yeah the the way that the story of Jesus and early Christianity is explained in that book really started to change the way I understood the faith that I had followed for so long for my whole life and I started to realize that it didn't quite make sense to follow someone who never claimed to be God who shouldn't be worshipped as God who is was merely a very important person who we honor in Islam and who we love in Islam but we don't worship so he also wrote another book called no God but God and it is a very comprehensive introduction to Islam I also really recommend that um, he gives a really great overview of the tenets of Islam and also um, a history of the first Muslims a history of you know how the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him received revelation and um, how the early followers of the religion um, started to grow the faith and started to grow the community um, it also gives a great overview of the different sects of Islam it explains the the differences between Sunni Islam and Shia Islam um, it talks about Sufism it's really comprehensive and, and I really enjoyed it um, so that really opened my eyes more and then from there because I was I started to become interested in politics I started joining some groups at my school my college um, focusing on issues that were relevant to the Muslim community worldwide particularly um, liberation of Palestine and other causes that were more relevant in the US it was about the time that the Black Lives Matter movement was starting to take off um, it was around this time where the attack in um, Chapel Hill South Carolina took place where three young Muslims were killed by someone who hated them only because of their faith and I I remember there was an event going on and I kind of thought that it was just geared towards discussing what had happened and how everyone can respond to it but I didn't know that it was actually um, an event geared towards Muslims and it was the, the topic of discussion was how do, how should the Muslim community in America respond to this attack 
and I went there. It was the first time I ever went to any kind of Islamic event. Um, I was very clearly non-Muslim. I wasn't wearing a headscarf. I, I think I was dressed appropriately. I mean, I was covered, whatever. It was winter time, so I don't think that I would have stood out so much aside from not wearing a scarf and also being white, which, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people, especially in the New York Muslim community, are understandably uncomfortable seeing white strangers coming into Muslim spaces um, because of the heavy surveillance that the community experienced um, post 9-11, but nevertheless, um, people were very welcoming, very kind. Um, the girl next to me asked me where I was from, she invited me to come back, she was really excited that I was interested in Islam. Um, there was food served at the event, um, and when I left, I thanked the people who had served it, and they offered me food to take home, which was an act of such beautiful generosity and kindness, and that's something that, like, I just asked God to bless those, those women, because they were just so kind to me. So during that event, um, I think the main takeaway was, you know, the media can portray Islam any way that it wants but when people are attacked the characters of those people the character of those people is going to speak so much louder than any um, negative um, portrayal of Islam and these three young people were incredibly beautiful people and they did great work in charity and they were wonderful representations of the faith and to have their character on display like that even though it was in such a tragic way was just a benefit to me and um you know inshallah they're in in the highest level of paradise as martyrs of the faith because they had incredible impact I think so more studying more asking questions more going to events um, there were a lot of Muslim students in my college Alhamdulillah I was blessed for that so I I remember one day I went into the MSA the Muslim Students Association they had like a, a room and there was one room for women and one room for men and I went into the the women's side and I said you know I think you girls are so brave and so beautiful for um, for displaying your faith in the way that you dress in the way that you carry yourselves in the way that you speak and I I feel so I, I I'm in so much admiration of you and they embraced me and they invited me to go to events with them and they were very very kind and they said do you want to come to prayer with us and I was scared. I was like, no, I, I'm not ready for that. I don't know anything. I don't know how to pray. I don't, you know, it's, you know. And they had Juma prayer, which is Friday prayer every week at the school. So I started going to that. And then in 2015, I met my husband who is from Syria. And I wasn't Muslim at the time when we met. Yeah, I hadn't um, taken my Shahada. I hadn't declared my faith. But, you know, he never pressured me, which is something that I feel like is really important to say because people sometimes from the outside will ask if you converted for your part, for my partner, for my husband. And I absolutely did not. I was already interested. I was already almost to the point where I was ready to take my shahada, but I just wasn't there yet. Um, and he never pressured me, obviously. He just said, you know, the only thing I want is if you decide to do it, you decide to convert I want to be the person who's there with you and I want to say the Shahada and I want you to repeat after me because that would be very special between us and I said okay and that was it um, so we met in October uh, and then I think we were having a conversation one day and I said something like why do you have to choose one faith, you know, why can't you just find God in everything? Why can't you just see God in the sun and see God in the moon and see God in the stars and all these things? And he said, you know, there's a verse in the Quran that talks about that. 
um, Abraham is looking at the sun, he said, well, this must be God. And then the sun sets, and he says, well, the sun can't be God because it's gone now. I can't see it anymore, and God should always be here. And then he's looking at the moon, and he says the same thing, and then the stars, and the same thing, and, and he realizes that these are created things. And we're not meant to, cre to worship the created, but the creator. There were, there were other things, too. Um, there are a few videos, if you look up uh, Scientific Miracles of the Quran. Um, just, just things that were signs for me. And I was finally uh, ready to accept the faith, and I decided, I told him in like February, I said, okay, I want to do it. My birthday's at the end of March, so... I said, I'm gonna do it on my birthday. I don't know why. I just thought like it was like a rebirth kind of thing. So on my birthday, we went to the mosque and I was gonna, you know, say my shahada in front of the imam, but he actually, I think it was like prayer time and there were a lot of men in the mosque. So I didn't want to go in. Uh, if you don't know the men and women pray separately. So I couldn't really go in and disturb anyone. So I just stayed and, um, we actually stood like right outside the mosque, like inside the gate of the mosque, and he said shahada, and I repeated after him, and it was just a very special moment um, between the two of us, and for me especially. So something that people ask me a lot is how my family dealt with my decision, and the truth is that it was really hard for them, and it's still really hard for them. I still have a lot of extended family members who I haven't told, number one, because I don't want to hurt them, I don't want to disappoint them or make them upset, inshallah I'll be able to share with them one day, but as of right now I just haven't done it. And the other reason is that I don't want them to be judgmental, I don't want them to say anything negative. The only people whose opinions I really care about are my parents, and it took my parents a really long time, and you know, as far as like if you're going through something similar, just give people time because it's something really hard to accept especially when it's something that you don't understand like I said my parents weren't religious but they were I think um, a lot of times religious identity is linked to your cultural identity and linked to your individual identity so you feel like those things can't be separated but of course that's not true. Um, the Imam Khalil Latif at New York University, um, there was a brother who accepted Islam one day and he was giving a speech, the Imam was giving a speech and he said, you know, to become a Muslim is not to commit cultural apostasy. It's not to turn your back on everything that you've grown up with and every tradition and cultural um, significance that you have. Uh, and that was really important to me and it's something that I, I know that I've hurt my parents because they feel like I've betrayed them. I've, I, I mean now, alhamdulillah, things are better. I think that they've um, started to understand more. But I think the way that they look at it is that this is more of like a cultural betrayal as opposed to just something that um, was a, a theological decision, something that I'm a decision that I made based on the tenets of the faith, not culture. And I think that's why so many people just kind of stay the faith that they were when they were born, because they never question it. And to step outside that comfort zone is really difficult. And a lot of times, religion and religious identity becomes more about who you are than what you actually believe in and you know my identity as an Italian American is not based on the idea that Jesus of Nazareth was God it's based on my uh, my cultural heritage my ethnicity um, the fact that my my father's family and my mother's family decided to move and start a life in the United States. And they worked hard, they went through tough times, and they raised me here. Yeah, it, it has been difficult for them, but I just, 
I feel like things have gotten better, especially when they see me in my marriage and they see me happy. They realize that I made the right choice for myself. If you have other questions, I think I might make more videos like this because, I, like I said, I really like listening to other people tell their stories and I used to think that my perspective wasn't really important, like I didn't really have anything to say or anything to share, but I think everyone has a unique perspective and everyone has something to share. So I, if you have questions, if you want to know more about how I dealt with certain challenges, I'd be really happy to share and I'd be really happy to, to hear about the struggles that other people are going through because it's the only way that we can um, do better for ourselves and for each other. So inshallah, you and your family are healthy, like I said, um, and that we see the other side of this virus as soon as possible and um, that Ramadan brings blessings for everyone and peace to everyone. and. Um, that's really all I have to say for now. So, assalamu alaikum, peace be upon all of you, and um, take care, and I'm looking forward to having a conversation. Bye. Uh, shadow. Allah Allah Ilaha Ilaha Illa Illa Allah Allah Wa ashadu Wa ashadu Anna Anna Muhammadan Muhammadan Rasul Rasul Allah Allah Das war mein Glaubensbekenntnis, ich bin jetzt stolzer Muslim Allah Akbar